think that this turning into trap setting. So I mean, I, I did I did okay today. Did my usual money on small accounts. Uh, uh, you remember this account? I just want to show you this one for the guys yeah, out there. So this was last week. Remember I had that thirty-one thousand dollar account or some shit like that. Yeah, bro. So I mean, I I was away for like four days. So uh, so now I am at on that that little thirty-one thousand dollar account. Dude, that's insane. Forty-six already, man. What was that two days ago? Literally. Oh, I'm up to fifty thousand on that thirty-one thousand dollar account since last week. <laughs> See, yeah, two days off. <laughs> Bal, the, the, the thing that's funny about that, bro, is anytime I talk to somebody and they're like, yeah, man, Bal must trade with a $3 million account. I was like, dude, no, like you have no idea, bro. We trade with 35K accounts. Then when it gets to 50, you wire out. Yeah, I do this for education wise. I have a bigger account, obviously somewhere else, <laughs> but uh, um, this is what I trade and this is what we teach. And these are the stocks that we trade off the watch list. So everything that we teach, uh, you guys see, I post all my charts from this account. And that's what it is, guys. Yeah, anytime you guys see a PL posted, guys, it's it's usually from one of the 35k accounts. Like, so when you see a three thousand dollar PL or a one, or even dude, even Alex's one hundred thousand dollar PL that one day, it's from a 35k account usually, man. So you have to understand that you can do this with the amount of money you have, and and you don't need a 35k account to get started, bro. We just said. A guy had thirteen hundred dollars and turned into seventy k on options. Like you got to stop getting in your head thinking that you can't do this because you have a little bit of money. You can. It's all about the process, guys. Process is everything. The blueprint. I we always talk about the blueprint for a thousand dollar days, beginning with two hundred dollar days. If you can keep consistently making two hundred dollars a day, the only difference is additional size, right? And yeah. At, Take a look at Lizzie, man. Holy Let's mother. Look. look at the 3 p.m. rule. What time is it, guys? What's that doing since you're cut? Oh, I'm, my God, bro. What, 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 what time is it? This is the reason why I fucking – check this out, guys. I'm going to post you what – You realize these lines are when I did it live for your channel trade. You realize that? Dude, this is the reason why I fucking stopped. Because these stocks are now just fucking blasting towards 3 p.m. So what I talked, what I told um, the room the other day was starting 3 p.m., 3.30, I'm going to start looking for these, these zombies. Because what, what happens is this, guys. These stocks have deviated so much from VWAP that at, towards the end of the day, the shorts need to cover, right? They want to cover. They don't want to fucking wake up the next day to a $12 fucking stock. Yep. And so this is how the squeezes happen. Dude, look at the deviation away from BWAP right now. This is crazy, man. This is a serious mover. I didn't think it would turn into this serious, but dude, this is why this little hard stop right here. Dude, I drew these live, bro, when Bao was trading it as to show you guys where the channel was. And if it breaks, we get the fuck out and look at this, dude. You could have saved yourself $2, man. It's, dude, it, take, take a look at the time. That is, remember I said I'm done, 3 p.m. And Alex joked about done until 3.01. This is the reason why I stopped at 3 p.m., guys, because I got fucked before so many times at 3 p.m. trying to make a little 20 cent scalp and losing like the dollar. It's right there. So what you need to do is if you do not have these time rules memorized, set an alarm clock every single day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before zombie hour, 15 minutes before 3 p.m. So that you, if you're short selling, you, you are aware to get the fuck out of these stocks. Unbelievable, man. Look at that, man. Look, look at that shit, guys. No, and dude, this is, this is ridiculous. This is like, this is ridiculous. MIC rules that Alex and I have fucking lost a million dollars to learn. <laughs> at least, bro. Like, <laughs> look, why, why, why did I arbitrarily just stop at 3 p.m.? Because the two reasons. I shorted. So what happens, uh, pull up that chart. I'm going to give you a big free lesson, guys. <clears throat> pull up my, my, my daily chart. So. What I did was, first of all, the channel trade, right? At the 620 line, 610 line, whatever. Yep. Uh, that's the one we talked about uh, already. So once it broke, what I did was I put a hard stop at $6.12. So if it broke 610, I gave a little uh, fudge factor of two cents, you know? And so I filled at 612. I mean, yeah, 612. So I got out right before that spike. 
And what, what happens is this, that spike happened and then people started shorting, right? If you had a mental stop, your first instinct would be, okay, it rejected off 680, I'm gonna start shorting 680. Cause I'm down, I'm averaging down. That's the wrong attitude. That's the trap that gets you to the fucking next line. So I waited for the next line. The top was set at 750 and that's where I shorted. So I waited for the, so it's 750 and it went down to 7, 718 or something like that, 710, right? So that in a way was kind of like, not really a death candle, but that signaled the top. So it, it set a, a temporary top at 750 line. And that's why I shorted it on the bounce back up to the outer line at that time. And then I covered front side shorts require front side covers. And the reason I cover it, because this thing, if it were to have rejected and really topped out at 750, it would have went under $7, but it did not. It held, the trend held. And that's why I got out and I looked at the clock. I said, 3 p.m., fuck this shit. I got out my last little shares. And then sure, surely enough, five minutes later, boom. Whoever did not fucking learn the MIC rules just got fucking killed. It's probably stopped out at $8. Dude, I can't tell you how many years in the beginning, Val, I thought all of this was random and I thought it was just based on sentiment. There was no time-based trading. And you guys have no idea the edge you can have if you know time-based trading, trend trading, when to pull back. And just, dude, the, the rules that we have to keep you safe are the reason you join MIC, man. Even a nutless monkey could make money, but everybody gives it back until you learn what we have to offer. Everybody gives it back. And that's the thing, dude. So it's like, people don't even know about these things, Val. It's crazy. I didn't for the first three years, dude. For my first three years of trading career, I was like, wait, really? Like there's certain time frames for shorting. There's certain time frames for longing. Like hard stops are a thing. Like, dude, you just don't know this stuff when you're new. Yep, yep. So... Any questions out of guys? Because this is fucking huge, guys. This is fucking huge. I dodged two huge ass That's bullets. Huge. A fucking brain right here. No, you dodged a huge one there, pal. That was that was a that was I the dodged perfect it all ever, man. This fucking stock, guys. Take a look at that shit. So for a ten thirty zombie, you're looking for under around VWAP at three p.m. Zombie, you're looking for a deviation from VWAP. Now you want to expand? Yep. So what happens is during the zombie hours. So this is why I know this is, this is basically the million dollar fucking rule that MIC is giving away, right? This is what we're, we're famous for, the zombie rule. That's because I noticed that. The, so in the beginning of the market, you have first hour. That's where all the volume happens. And when there's so much volume that happens, the, the algos cannot easily manipulate the stock because it's just too much volume, right? And so it's, it's organic trading. Organic means natural. People are placing orders and buys, right? They're not fucking spoofing and shit like that because it's too much order flow. Um, and then what happens is now after an hour, this is the zombie hour, it starts to fucking slow down. Volume slows down. And that's when, that's when the algos can manipulate. But during that time, what happens is this. So we have a concept called hovering we VWAP and all that. We don't want to talk it too much because that's kind of proprietary to, to MIC as well. So we talk about this is a concept that's proprietary to MIC called hovering VWAP. Basically why, so people look at VWAP and kind of like, okay, well, it's under VWAP, it must be weak. Well, that's bullshit, that's wrong. We, we realize that that's how they use to trap people. So we have this concept called hovering VWAP, which is like, if it hovers around that VWAP, plus or minus 10, 20 cents or whatever it may be, it has a huge chance of zombieing if the float is rotated. Yep. So that's the first thing. So if you are down, upside down, if you're red on the fucking stock shorting and zombie hour comes, close the fucking trade. You're not gonna make your money back. There's no fucking way in hell because they're gonna use the zombie hour to trap you. They're gonna pretend that it looks weak and you keep adding. Next you know, you turn your fucking 1,000 share position into 10,000 shares and now you're blowing up your account. So that's the first thing, that's, that's the zombie. And then at three o'clock, the same exact thing. So Lizzie, the VWAP is $6 and what? 55 cents. There's no way that fucking shorts right now are fucking fighting over each other. Every single dip is being fucking bought out by a short seller because they're trying to fucking get the fuck out of this stock. Yeah, they're shitting when, themselves, man. That's when, why we have such a gap. Over, right? So when it is over is when you realize, when you notice that it just fucking starts to skip. 
it just starts fucking because what happens is uh, you're gonna get margin calls all that stuff so at this point there's really you should not fucking short because you don't know what the fuck the top is okay the only way you can short on a front side is if you have a temporary top that's set uh, which is signaled usually by like a big ass rejection candle or a death candle. So right now it's still walking up. This is too close to the $8. That top has not been set yet. If you want to take a risk at $8, set a fucking stop for 10 cents. So if you want to trade this stock, man, you can keep fucking trying to cherry pick and lose 10 cents over and over and over. You lose 10 times as a dollar loss, right? So you, and my advice is not to fucking do it. My advice right now is too late in the day. There's not enough time. Uh, all the shorts right now are fighting. Uh, Revisit this tomorrow if you're shorting. Yep. If you want, you can do this at eight dollars and stop out. I mean, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You know, you can do it ten times. So, you know, it's still a big loss. But right now, there's an eight dollar top on it. There's twenty five cents on the top. Um, it's being bought up right now because what happens? Imagine. So the way you trade is this, guys. Put yourself in the sh in the shoes of whoever's short or stuck. I mean. If you're stuck, what are you going to do? You're fucking panicking, man. You're, you've added already to the max you can add. Now you got to fucking get the fuck out. And so every fucking dip, you're adding, you're adding, adding. You're, you're covering, 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 things like that, right? So so right now it's coming down, which is, let's take a look at the fucking first bounce. Let's fucking do it for fun. I'm going to fucking do it for fun. Definitely. I'm going to fucking do a first bounce because this is a big enough deviation movement from fucking um, the top. I'm not going to tell you where I enter because I don't want anybody to copy. I already know, but I want you to say. I'm going to, sh oh shit, I fucking clicked the wrong button, son of a bitch. I'll show you where I'm going to do it. So this is, wow, this is a big hard pull. I love this. This is a monster. Wow. The VWAP is 660. We'll, so we'll draw a line of VWAP okay. and we'll draw a line right here. Where would you guys get in? Let's do an exercise. I won't tell you where I get in yet. You guys should be paying attention, close attention. I'm, I'm doing this fucking live here. This is not easy to do, guys. I am going to... I'm playing it safe because I'm fucking talking through this. I didn't, I'm not really focused, but um, so you guys so the, have the, of the first bounce is this thing is still very deviated from VWAP. So right now, any pull, my theory is short sellers are gonna fucking want to buy it, and and they're still underwater. Six sixty is the fucking VWAP. So the key is not to be too early. Guys, notice that even just that little bounce and perfect touch off the line when you draw it at the base of the candles like I did. Lines work, man. There's a reason for this, but we're going to give ourselves some room on this. Yeah, so let's see. I mean, not everything is going to work out, but let's see what happens, guys. We're trying to find a bottom. It's my viewpoint, Bal, on this that Dude, it's so deviated that you're going to get a nice first bounce out of this because the, it just, dude, the, we're in trap market. Things are running to the heavens right now, especially meme stocks. When something shows extreme strength like this and it hasn't in a while, this is big, man. I wouldn't be, I, I personally wouldn't be shorting any of this. I wouldn't want any short on this piece of shit. No way. Nice little bounce so far. <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything yet because I don't want anybody to screw this up. Um, I don't want anybody to get caught. I don't want anybody to lose. For anybody looking in on this, you should be 100% just watching for a learning experience. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could pump this and all you guys get in and I'll fucking make money. And that's what pump rooms do, which we do not do. Now, after your trade, let's actually really discuss that and tell people how they do it. Like it's simple, but there's a science to it. And it's fucking scary shit. <laughs> <It's almost> scary. <laughs> yeah, serious. <laughs> um, I'm basically using my money to uh, educate you guys here. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. VWAP's changing a little bit, so I'll just raise this. Uh, three. It's still very early. Three thirty is the optimal time, guys. 
three thirty is the ultimate time because that's the that's the panic time that if I was a short seller, I'd be like, oh fuck, man, I gotta cover this shit. Yeah, the last half hour, guys, is when you do not want to be short. You don't want to be short the last hour of the day, but the last half hour, if you're shorting, you're a gambler. Sorry to say, you're a gambler. Guys, pay attention to the volume as well. Uh, you want to keep talking? I'm gonna. Yep. yep. So, so guys, like the thing with the thing with any type of trade, whether you're long or whether you're short, is going to be scaling. You don't want to just blow your load at 740 because if you did and you threw full size, you'd be cutting for a loss, scared as shit right now. So, whether you're scooping a stock on a first bounce or you're shorting a first resistance or you're doing a death line. The whole key is scaling because if you do too much at once and you kind of, again, it's for lack of a better term, blow your load, that's very dangerous, right? So, and it's going to mess with your emotions. And then sometimes the trade will go your way. Sometimes it won't. But if it does, you're just going to be kicking yourself that you're like, man, I didn't give myself enough room, right? So again, it knows no bounds, whether it's, you know, obviously a first bounce, a death line short, low hanging fruit, whatever it is. Scaling really is the key to trading. That's one of our secret kind of resources, right? And MIC is teaching you guys how to scale and size properly. Like this actually, Lizzie, if you pull back for a second, is putting in a nice top, but still, still the notion is that I wouldn't want to short this because look at this trend, dude. Look at this daily trend. It's a nice pull candle, but again, this thing is very deviated from VWAP. What we mean by that, is there's a massive gap between where it's trading and its relation to VWAP. So you can use that to your advantage on a psychological level. So when you're a short, you go, dude, if I was stuck at 660 and this is finally pulling down, I, you know, I'd be covering, I'd be buying to cover, which is quote unquote exiting for a short because holy shit, man, like I'm getting relieved a little bit of my position. But what happens when you become a buyer as a short seller? you're now throwing demand into the stock as any other dip buyer, scooper, or normal buyer would be. So it has a chance of propelling it back upward. You're basically exiting for a loss, running for the, running for the exit in the movie theater saying, get me the hell out of here. You do this is a Quentin Tarantino movie and I need out of here. You know, like that scene from, uh, oh God, what was that movie? I'm trying to think, but in Glorious Bastards, in Glorious Bastards, when they're all running for the freaking room because it's set on fire. Like, that's dangerous, right? So, so we always pay attention to this. I would actually trade the stock because it's a bad time for me to trade this kind of stock. There's not enough time, in my opinion, and I made enough money today to not piss it away. So a lot of the times, guys, even though it looks attractive, and just don't do it, right? When you're up another day and it's the end of the fucking day, just don't fucking do it. I completely agree. If you and, and, and that's just basically a general, if you guys ever feel like you're forcing a trade, you don't take the trade. You, why would you put that pressure on yourself, right? Sometimes when we're in an educator standpoint, we feel we have to sometimes because we can give you guys a really good example, whether, you know, Bao wins or loses on a certain channel trade that he's trying to teach or this or that. He's showing you guys one of two things is going to happen. He's going to win on the trade because there was good odds. And he's going to show you guys how the trade operates on a pattern, basically scale. Or he's going to stop out and show you guys that, look, we had a fighting chance because we had an edge, but here's how you exit and stop out and keep your account safe. So either way, we win in showing you guys and educating you what to do because there's only one of two things can happen. You either make money or you lose very small and protect your account. And that's even a win because the guys that are long at eight and holding on right here to seven, that's just crazy, man. They didn't wait for a good entry and now they're just holding and hoping it gets back to even, right? Like you don't wanna be the guy long at eight and like, oh my God, oh my God, please go back to eight. Oh my God, please go to nine. I'll give anything. I'll change religions. God, I'll do anything for you. Just get this back to nine. Like, dude, we've all been there and you just don't wanna be there. Second is you could be short at six and be like, oh my God, please God, I'll do anything for this to go back to six. Guys, don't be that guy. Don't be that trader. I've been that trader for many years in the beginning. And it was just a fucking ulcer every day in your, 
in your stomach, dude. It's a, it, it give you the bubble guts, man. You'll be shitting bricks every time you crap in trading diapers left and right, dude. So stay away from the bubble gut trading and trade correctly. <laughs> I can't remember where I heard that term bubble guts, but I think it's from a movie. I just quote movies all day. But. A lot more than it should have, guys. Just, so you got to be careful. This one takes a lot more than it should have. Yep. Um, I'm telling you, the time is also very important. It's so late in the day, and they're, it ran up so much without any profit taking. You see that, guys? So that's another clue that this is a very risky bounce trade because it just went up, and there's nobody to take profits. And once they fucking parabolic a short out, who else is buying? It's true. It's 100% true. We don't have much profit taking in here. That's one of the only things I would say that would be going against the first bounce here for the most part. Correct. With the late in the day and not I, much profit taking. Fucking... Yeah, this is not a good bounce. This is more of like now, now it's kind of, kind of fucked up kind of shit. Yeah, now it's kind of bleeding versus taking its time and consolidating. Correct. So this is not a good example, guys. That's all right. Finish your webinar. Yeah, you know what's so cool about this though? Again, guys, like here's how we win, right? You either win in money and you play the setup just like this could easily have been a first bounce that actually works. But look, not every single one's gonna work. You think you think I haven't stopped out at death candles? Dude, not every death candle works. Not every death line works. If you guys thought every, and if look, if trading was as much an exact science as this is guaranteed to work as a first bounce, we'd have private islands. Yeah, Alex would have a fleet of Lamborghinis, dude. That's the way it works, but it doesn't work like that. You have to gauge your emotions in a setup and say, look, is this setup actually not working? Do I feel it's not working? Okay, I got to get out. I got to put a hard stop. I got to exit this position because if I hold on and hope, that's not a strategy. And then you're just going to be really, really in the hole, whether it's mentally fatigued or obviously financially fatigued because now you're just a bag holder, right? Like, Again, you don't want to be the guy first bouncing this here at 740. And then when it goes to 540 tomorrow, you're still holding on. You're like, oh my God, please release a PR. I'll do anything for a good PR. You can't be that guy, man. We're trying to teach you to be self-sufficient traders where every single day you get in with a plan. And sometimes that plan is not going to be profitable. And guess what? That's okay. That's fine. It's totally okay because not every single trade works out. Yep. Yep. Mike, Mike just thought the exact same thing. This technically had a really good chance of bouncing. It just didn't. It kind of bled off because of the profit taking scenario. It's kind of late in the day. Was it worth the try? In my opinion, 100%. Is every trade going to be profitable? Not at all. Definitely not. Two out of 10 trades. If you have a solid process, one to two out of 10 trades is not going to be profitable. So guess what happens? You put a hard stop and you're still the trader after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and your grandparents are like, damn, you still haven't failed at this trading thing. You're like, no, bitch, I use hard stops. <laughs> Thanks, so the, Gramps. Uh, so the lesson here, guys, is not every trade is going to work. Tosh said it right. You have to predefine your risk. Put yep. a hard So those that did not predefine a risk is holding on to the bag right now. So that, that's the thing. Don't be too overconfident. Even if it deviates from DWAP, that it cannot go back to DWAP. I perfect, perfect clarity. And guys, just because, you know, you lose on this, like say a dub, like you, you had a little scalp loss on this, right. Which is totally okay, man. Cause like, from what I see, you probably had an average here of maybe seven, 11, maybe seven, 12, you get out at six ninety, what three, bro, that's not a career ending loss. Right. But this thing has an offering today. Then you have a career ending loss. Then you're holding and hoping down to three and two. That's the shit you never want to do. It's worth a shot. Um, like I said, dude, if I shorted and every death candle went my way after I shorted, I dude, I, I freaking own islands. It doesn't work like that. So was this worth a shot? Totally. And the second thing I would say on this is if this go, does go back to $10 and you've already hard stopped like a dub just did, or, um, Raul just did. And you're like, Oh my God, I knew I was right. Guys, you're still playing the whole, the, the hold and hope game, right? Just because you stopped out and then maybe it does go your way, you don't beat the shit out of yourself like, oh my God, I'm such a dummy for cutting. I was right had I just held on. Those are the type of habits that are basically build bad habits because here's what's going to happen with that mentality. Oh, I should have held. I was right. I should have held on the next one. I'll be right. You remove hard stops. You remove your max loss and you blow up on the next one because, oh, quote unquote, I should have been right. 
you, you guys starting to see the, 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 the commonality here? Whether you win or lose, you always have to keep your hard stops and have your plan and stick to your plan. That's what we're trying to say. And not every single one is going to be profitable. And that's okay. Stop beating yourself up. I don't care if this goes to 12. You guys should not be complaining. You had a plan. You stuck to your plan. Great. Do it again tomorrow. Someone asked what? Was a short. I mean, dude, you, in hindsight, it looks like a short, but at that time, dude, who the fuck knows, right? It could have went to 10 bucks. Yeah, Val, honestly, my, my bet, dude, was on a really good first bounce here back to eight. I did not think that this would bleed, bleed the way it did, truly. So, I mean, th that's what happened. Everyone thought the same thing. And so there was no fucking profit taking all the way up. And so it went all the way back to the – to the point where it was last supported, right? So that's the so, lesson. Guys. So I think this has to be said. I think this has to be said. The reason why we never um, really do like live screen shares of this, guys, like in the morning when, when like your Furu gets on like microphones and does screen share is because that, what it does is it pumps position. And I'm not convinced. We got a lot of people watching this webinar. I'm thinking that there was a possibility that this bleed off was caused on so many people following Bao. It is possible because when everybody does one thing, the stock does the opposite. If Bao didn't post that maybe he did a first bounce on this, who knows, man, it might've actually not done this. That's the scary thing about like letting people know in the exact moment, oh, I'm long or I'm doing this is when everybody thinks the same, the opposite happens. This is why it's called pump. So when you're Furu, on their microphone or their YouTube live screen share every morning are like, here's what's happening, right? They long a stock and then they get everyone, but they really alert. They let you know, there's no ambiguity, right? Like they let you know. And they're like, oh, I'm longing at 740. I'm doubling and triple down at seven. And then they alert to a room of 5,000 people. Guys, you have to understand what's happening. They create so much artificial demand on purpose. They're out in seconds for a big win. And you're usually left holding the bag because now everybody's thinking the same thing. All the members are like, oh my God, this is a long, this is a dip by. Everybody rush in. I just got an SMS alert. Just got a Palm Pilot alert. Let's all go in. Everybody thinks the same, then it craters. Why do you think pump and dumps happen? Artificial volume and then everybody on the same bias, the inverse happens, welcome to trading. So that's the whole reason why we don't pump and dump and stuff. And, and usually low flows. Yes, of course. Usually low flows for sure. Due to, well, you know, a little now, now things, things like that. But. I'm just getting out for pretty much even. Yeah. Got an even trade for you, bud? Yeah, pretty much. This, yep. It held seven. Like the, the way I go about lines, guys, and this is just a personal um, kind of comfortability level. You guys can do it any way you want, but I always do the base of the candles so like, that's where I try to draw my lines and I pay attention to this. If it's wiki, I try not to cut. So like if say like my, my resistance usually cause I'm a short seller, but if this was my support, I'd really try to give this a room until it showed its hand on the base of the candles to close because this actually based on bases of candles held like a motherfucker. This held seven and then boom, you got your bounce. Lizzie, not a good trade, but even my bad trades are like a minimal loss. I love that Val. I think you did, dude, I think you did a solid job. I've lost maybe eight, 900 bucks on a 10,000 share position. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. And uh, dude, I, I got to tell you, I think I, you worked your way I was out. Over, I was overconfident on this. Um, I, this was late in the day, all these factors to get in. But if it was early in the day, guys, I, this would have worked in my opinion. It's just way too late. There's people who are profit taking it. The longs don't really want to hold this overnight as well. Right. Now, let me ask you a question, buddy, because I drew these lines before you were telling us where you were getting in on the way down once I saw this kind of like top candle. I wouldn't call this a true death candle, but I drew these lines. Um, actually, I drew it right here. Uh, I drew them at the base of the candles. You started getting in right at this line, right? On the pretty much the base. I think it was what? Because this was a closeout on a short. So your first entry was probably that 740, right? Yeah, I was pulled out on a short. And do you guys see why? Do you see why so I drew I the line? Do you see why you did that? I started, I mean... Let me see. My average, I think, was was seven twenty eight in the lower. So that's solid, so, man. And I mean, I, I've lost. Imagine I have ten thousand shares. I lost eight nine hundred bucks. So I mean, do the math. It's not that bad. 
Um, yeah, no, here, here, and here's the thing, but this is the thing I love that you did, Bal, is you did exactly where I drew the lines and what I was paying attention to, because as this started breaking 710, I would, that's why I moved it to seven, I would have given it to seven. So as you guys noticed, what Bal was doing is he waited for the bases of this support, which is basically the top of the support level, you could give yourself under here, but because this whole and half dollar number is here, I'd give yourself seven. And again, if you're stopping out at exactly seven, you're stopping out with the herd. So I, I like to see I actually, like a much factor. I actually, I actually had FOMO guys and I started early because I'm educating and I, I was trying to show off as well. So I got that <laughs> Uh, so to be that, I mean, that's the honest truth. If I, if I was training this so silently myself, I would not be in that size. I was kind of showing off as well. And I, oh, I almost got killed, <laughs> but I didn't, you know. Um, so but I love your skills, Bal. I love your skills from about the 734 uh, to 7. I'll this because I always show this shit. I don't hide them from this crap. Uh, even if I lose, it doesn't fucking matter to me. Uh, it's not about the ego, guys. Right? It's about the education and we all learn something from this. I learned from this as well. So I'm going to show you this is the PL from it. So it's not that, I mean, I did, it's not that bad. Dude, that's nothing, I mean, bro. Like, for that size, it's like a paper cut, right? Dude, that's nothing, bro. That's absolutely nothing, especially for I a lot of like, I lost like a nickel. So now it's gonna go up. Now it's gonna go up. Now, now that I got out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna beat. Uh, but I told you guys, don't beat yourself up too much. If it does go your way, the best you can do is follow your plan. So this is what I learned, guys. So I fucked up. I was in early. Usually, it's gonna break down more than you think it will. So the low I got was six eighty eight. That's usually where good things happen. A little bit of fudge factor under seven. Because every, it's like, you know, you think about where most of the guys want to buy, right? They're going to fucking start getting FOMO, start buying at $7.40, $7.20, $7. And then, oh, fuck, it's under six nine. they They're going to stop out. So wherever those good longs, early longs stop out is usually where the bottom is. But once again, guys, this, this is a very difficult chart because if you take a look at, if you take a look at the spikes up, there was not much room for profit taking. Most of this is shorts tripping over themselves, trying to cover yep. before the end of the day. So you, you, you have a very difficult situation. But the fact that I got out where I got out, I mean, here, let me take a look at my, here, let me show you what my fucking trades were. Now, if you ask me, dude, this was, this was damn near a perfect trade for a loss, man, seriously. I mean, shit, dude, I, I, it could have been really bad, guys, but I wasn't that bad. Oh, shit, look at this. Look at this continued bleed. Wow. I should have shorted it because it was fucking weak as shit. You see how that works, guys? When the bounce fails and it's now fucking that VWAP under VWAP area. So the fact that I got out and I was okay to take this loss, a lot of guys would hold on thinking, yeah, baby, I'm in the money. And then they just got going. So when you're wrong, make a plan to get out. So I had a plan to get out. I was, I was about to get out with a $2,000 loss and I'd be okay. But thank God that it went up and I only got out for like 800 bucks, 900 bucks lost, which is like nothing. Yeah. Dude, so pay that, attention to the volume, you guys, on these candles. When I say true death candles, day. you want the biggest candle of the day, but you want a massive amount of volume coming out. So as you guys can see the volume level right here, pay attention to this number in this box right here. See this, if you scroll over this candle, 2 million. I would want to see truly if this was a death candle during the day, it's too late in the day to short, but it, I'm just showing you for a death candle example. If this was a death candle, I was paying attention to maybe during reversal hour in the morning. I'd like to see 5 million on this candle, but it only did 1.5. This had so more. This is, this, good for tomorrow. See that? this is good for tomorrow guys. $7 and 20 cents is a great line to start. Yep. Nibbling. So hope this thing holds up tomorrow. We're going to be fucking having fun with it. Seven twenty to $8. Tomorrow we'll put our pivot lines on this and it'll be what's called a low hanging fruit, ideally. But, but you take a look, right guys? So I basically show you how to mitigate a fucking bad trade. And I, I, I analyze why it was a bad trade. I just didn't say, oh, these fucking motherfuckers are manipulating the stock like some of these fools on Twitter, right? I actually owned my loss. I said I, I fucked up. I was trying to show off. So that was early. And I sized more too early because I wanted to show off. And then when I noticed that it was fucking weak, I made a plan to just cut my losses. 
the the cool part is guys whether you win or lose like Bao just said if you take your ego and blame or you know like um overconfidence out of the equation you actually really understand why you won or why you lost and Bao just completely explain why he lost that's the whole point of learning and growing as a trader is getting away from any type of blame and even overconfidence is like a blame right like in a in a weird way but if you just pull back for the you know and see the force for the trees and you go wow i won on this because i lost on this because you're gonna really get better as a trader because you're gonna break down the reason of why. There's always a why, dude. There's always a why. It's never manipulation or algos or the, dude. There's always a why. There's a why uh, within algos. The why is because you fucked up. <laughs> to ke to keep it simple. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You never see these fucking guys on Twitter talk about. I, they just can't say that they messed up. It's always some some other fucking reason, manipulation. But when they win. It's because they're the best trader in the world, right? Right. Um, I mean, that's that's what it is, guys. You know what, man? You have to be okay with taking this loss. One bad trade, one wrong trade does not define you as a trader. It is okay, guys, to fucking lose. Mining, but mind you, that's coming from the guy who made one point five million in one day, and he just said that. This is not I me saying I've never made one point five million in one day. <laughs> So I think I've lost uh, four days the past three months. So today I'm green. I'm good. Yesterday I'm green. I'm good. I lost uh, right before I took off on vacation, which is a tiny loss for me. So um, I made a lot more than that today. So um, so that's the thing, guys. The, 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 the key is, you know, know your system. Don't go over your system. So the reason I lost on this Lizzie trade is because – I size more than I usually do for this account. Right. Uh, notice that size is way too much for this account. And when I was trading Lizzie, maybe I was doing a third of that size. And so when small size, you can manage it better. And when you're up, you add more. I was trying to muscle it to show off because you know, let's try to show off. <laughs> well, and Val, I think that that's a really good learning lesson. And the only reason why I would harp on it just a little bit is because you've already brought it up for the members is yeah, if 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 this was in the morning and Val was using 10,000 shares on something like this, I'd be like, great. It's the, you know, the first hour of the day where we've got the edge completely this late in the day, if Val's using 10,000, that's a lot of size for this late in the day. So, and and I would probably be on Val as a, as a tap partner. I'd be like, Val, it's a little, uh, you know, it's not a premium setup to use that kind of size. But again, like when you know what you've done wrong and you admit it, that's how you just get so much fucking better, dude. You get so much better as a trader, man. Yep. I am okay with taking a loss, guys. There's nothing, it's not going to define me. It does not make me a bad trader. You know, what makes me a bad trader is fucking not owning my loss and repeating it over and over. Correct. So it actually might be good I fucking lost this shit. So it shows people that why I lost. A lot of these, a lot of people are entering stocks too early. They're greedy. It's the end of the day. Just fucking remember, I told you, man. I don't want to give back everything I made the last fuck half hour. And this is why we gotta walk away. Yeah. I could potentially lost it all back if it dropped to fucking a dollar, right? Um, right. So good thing that I recognized I was wrong and just took my loss. So notice where I scaled out, man. I, you know what, man? I was like, man, I'm wrong. Remember, I said this. This should not. Tank this much. You were, say, you were saying it right here, Bal, on this candle right here. It should not take. It should not be taking this long to bounce back. There's something wrong with this. Yep. 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 And so when I recognize that, I'm like, you know what, Matt? I'm gonna wait for a fucking bounce. I'm gonna get the fuck out. So, then, so you saw myself. I was like, fuck, man. I'm fucking unloading this shit all the way up. And generally and, enough, the moment I got out, huge ass candle down. And, and, and Bell, let's let, let's let's go over one last time in conclusion in the sense that guys, would we have taken this trade over? Yeah, it was a good setup enough to take a shot. The fact that Bell got out, maybe had a hard stop, or just basically exited um, and protected his account is why he's been here for 20 years. Was this worth a shot? Fuck yeah, it was. But it's a first bounce that didn't work out. One or two out of ten don't work out. And guess what? As long as you're not still holding the bag, if Bell's still not holding 10,000 shares of 663 and hoping it bounces. You're not a gambler. You're a trader with a plan and good risk management. I uh, where I fucked it once again was I oversized. So you gotta be careful about being greedy and using the cushion game. Just if I had just kept to what I'm doing, I probably would have made money. 
Yeah, but, Val, honestly, you probably would have started in it, like if you were not during the webinar, because I know this pulls your focus a little bit, bro, seriously. I know you would have started in at 720 and probably uh, loaded at seven and got a really nice profitable bounce right here. So dude, even depending on how you look at it, this first bounce totally worked. That one was just a little early, seriously, and a little oversized. And remember what I said about the first bounce. I call it the first bounce because <laughs> the first time kind of works well. The second time I had, the third time, forget about it. So yep. notice if it came back, I did not add it. I just got out and said, fuck, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I did not get back to the well. So I did not buy 688 and they have it dump on me, things like that. So, so Val, just to kind of close the webinar on, on the topic of Ed Han, how do, how are people, how do you profit on the meme stocks like GME and AMC? Trend. You profit. Just like this. A couple of things. Uh, sympathy. You either ride the trend of the meme stocks on day one and day two. Do not ride on day three and four. It's very dangerous to go long on a day three, and especially a day four. Day three is usually when stocks tank, but since these are meme stocks, which is abnormal, everyone's trying to fucking pump this thing up, and there's, you know, there's options involved, and all these complicated things like you know the the the, the fucking the gamma, whatever the fuck they call it, right? Yeah. Run, you know. So this is a very, very unique situation. This is not a normal play. They're trying to squeeze the stock up via option, the same method that they're squeezing Tesla up. They're, they're buying out of the money calls, which makes market makers hedge by, move, by buying, you know, the hedge, by, by buying the covered calls and shit like that, right? They're shorting and then they're buying to hedge. So this is a weird anomaly. The way you profit is you, you do not fight the trend. Notice that the trend keeps going up. You profit by riding the trend. Bingo. Or don't even trade at all. Put in a hard stop. And then if you're a short sell, just wait. There's plenty of meat. First red day is going to be huge for this, guys. This is going to be huge first red day. First red day is, is going to be huge. So, so just wait. The signal to short is the first red day. I know Alex is already licking his chops, dude. Alex has already got a bib and a fork and a knife ready for the first red day. <laughs> yep. So that's exactly what it is, guys. So now this thing is out of control. We don't know when the top is. It's just fucking ridiculous. I break $20 and then fucking these, these naked call guys are dead. Naked call option guys are dead. I'm um, hoping it breaks over 20 tomorrow. It just goes ballistic because the higher it goes, the better the first red day setup will be. Yep. And, and then this is how you can learn if you're in MIC. Go search first red day in the member library and study those videos. Here, Bell, I'll pull it up for you. One sec. So tonight, guys, those guys want to profit. Go study the first red day videos. Guys, right here, videos tab on the myinvestingclub.com website. Right here, just look for either first red day or FRD. Yep, first red day. Uh, oop. My computer's a little slow right now. I'm not sure if that loaded in time. One sec. So whoever's on YouTube is getting a huge fucking huge tip. The way yeah, guys. to pop it on these now is the first red day. It's gone out of control. This is just fucking breaking all the all, all everybody's kept trying to short this. I've lost money. Um I short. AMC is fucking really tough. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I, I closed Green Day despite all this bullshit I did. Um, so how do you benefit, guys? You benefit because, you know, I, this happened before. The last time it happened before, Alex spent over 100 grand on GME. First red day. So guys, you, you should be paying full attention to this, these videos tonight. If you're a member tonight, if you're not a member, sign up. If, if it's your first month at MIC, guys, go to the Join Now page. You got 50% off your first month right here, limited time. If you have further questions, free consultation with me. Click it, sign it. We'll go over it. We will schedule it. We'll talk. Text my business line as always, but I'm telling you right now, dude, we lay it all out. Tech right here, 213-458-5997. I'll get you the accelerator course so you can learn this in detail, what you should be looking over. You don't have to go in the video library and look at 10,000 videos if you don't want. Uh, the accelerator course is a much quicker uh, kind of linear option 
But I'm telling you, man, if you want to learn how to do any of this type of stuff and to be ready for when AMC really does go red and profit from, see, OP trader looking for the first red day. Dude, we've taught our members well on what to look for because it's that simple. It's not easy. It is not easy. As you just saw, Bow's in it. He's in the headspace of the first bounce. He's in it. We just did a live trade for you, which actually turned out to be about a break-even trade for the most part, depending, you know, obviously according to Bow's size and Bow's P&Ls, but it's the headspace that makes it hard. Our, our teachings simplify price action, what you need to look for, but if you can get out of your own head, you can be a profitable trader, but you got to learn to get out of your own head in the accelerated course and MIC is going to help you do that. Cool. Any questions? This yep. Is, uh, Any exactly. last minute questions, guys? Any last minute? We got like maybe this one or two questions. I think there's more lessons that we've had on a loss than a win, guys. And now we talked about how to benefit from the first red day. So that's that's the setup. Dude, this was this was the best webinar, man. Because honestly, Bell, I think this was the first time in on a public webinar. <laughs> this is how this is how consistent Bell is. This may be the first one we ever recorded where he actually lost money on. Yeah, Ooh, great fucking lesson. <laughs> We've been doing this for a long time, <laughs> <laughs> like a year, dude. This is the this is the first time I lost money on a on Tosh's webinar. Fucking Tosh. <laughs> In a year, now he's gonna have me de Venmo him ten percent of his loss back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, now me and Alex gotta get him Grubhub for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. That's funny, right? This is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I'm still waiting on all my all my all my year of Venmo 10% wins, so maybe we'll call this even. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Alex just lost out on a fortune. But but that's good, guys. You saw how risk management is done. You 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 saw me say out loud, "Fuck, this trade is not working," and it was early recognition, right? And so I was looking, which is a fucking bounce to get the fuck out. So. And guys, this is all recorded. So if you want to go back and watch this in detail, dude, a live, live, live with live, you got the thought process in Bow's head. Go watch this and understand where he got in, why he got in, maybe the size he was using, maybe the mistake in that, maybe the pros of his exit. Like, dude, you'll get it all. So this is all recorded as everything else is. You don't have to ask me about that. You know it is. And uh, we'll post, man. And, 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 and again, this is just another day. We have Tosh. We have Tosh. So What's that, buddy? Another 3 p.m. rule here, PRVB. -R oh, dude, that's sick. Check this out, guys. Another example. So I stopped out at 3 o'clock. I'm telling you, man, it, bro, we teach these things not to hear us talk. We're bored of our own voices. We teach these because they work. They've saved us fortunes, man. Fortunes, right. dude. Look at this. So that's the, that's the key, guys. When, you, when you're wrong, make sure your losses are manageable man that's the thing everyone loses i lose i lose all day long i just fucking have more winners than losers right dude very informative i hope you guys saw the value in this and understand it we'll probably do something like this again maybe even next week but just remember guys if, if you do take a loss don't beat yourself up don't get so down on yourself that you get discouraged learn why get out of blame get out of ego and be like, well, seriously, I could have won on this. I didn't. What was the reason? And then once you do, man, you just become such a better trader. And if you need help in that regard, because you're not as fluid as maybe me or Bauer Alex are, because we really know what we're talking about, what we're looking for, guys, get a tab partner, get a tab partner that's better than you, that can teach you and bring you up to a level to where you progress together, evolve together. And again, yeah, we're, what, what, we're what, endless what, students, what dude. One last thing, but the tap thing that you mentioned is not necessarily find a tap one that's better because what happens is this. Uh, you may be better in one department than they are. Like, for example, man, if I'm a very good technical analysis individual, uh, but I'm horrible at filing. So if I, I partner with someone that knows filings, I do great, things like that. So you, as a tab, you help each other fill up deficiencies and holes in your trading. I'll, I'll correct Bow on that. It's not that he's bad at filings. It's just we don't have the attention span for it. So we need a really patient filings guy. Yeah. I know Bow, dude. I know Bow. The guy's got a mind that can cure cancer and AIDS and coronavirus. But <laughs> sometimes we don't have the attention span that matches up with his brilliance. Yeah. I used to figure out how many shots I can drink before I pass out. <laughs> yeah, he can figure out how to the perfect pickup line for a girl in a club, man. He could, he could, he could do the right thing. But I'm telling you, man, sometimes things like filings take a lot of patience. A lot of fucking focus. I can scale my drinks all night, shots. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> know your strengths, know your weaknesses, guys. Go find what you're looking for. We have all the resources we you need. Uh, hit me up if you have any questions. Schedule a call if you're not in MIC. And, dude, we'll do it again next week, man. This is a lot of fun, very informative, and thanks for coming, guys, seriously. All right, guys. We'll see you back in after hours. See you, Bell. See you, buddy. Bye.